During the course of The White Shadow, which of course only ran three years, Thomas went from being an actor to being a director. First one to get five buckets wins. But he really set his sights on that goal and in that short period of time accomplished it. I'm just taking care of business. Thomas Carter was always very serious about what he was doing. He had probably the most experience of the actors, um, although not a lot. He was very young at the time. He was the first one who wanted to direct, as did Kevin Hooks, as did Timmy Van Patten later on. I think a lot of us at the time had aspirations to do more. I know I did. I know I wanted to direct. That was a dream of mine. And I know Byron, who played cool, said that was his also. But I just didn't feel I was ready for it at that particular time. I don't think I was mature enough. You have to remember we were 19, 20, 21 year old kids running around and had a lot of things on our own agenda that we liked to do. At the time, Thomas was much more intense, very focused, and wouldn't really kind of brook any nonsense when we were shooting the scenes. You looking to get spaced, punk? And always express an interest early on in what was going on behind the camera. If you score down here, the reason's simple. It's because you're strongest. Well, my name is Haywood, James Hollywood Haywood. Got it. Now you guys sure you can handle it? So you're just gonna come out on top. You're just gonna get a reputation. Yeah. Well, I had been to college and studied theater and considered myself a serious actor, and I felt very fortunate to get on this show, and it was very exciting, you know, to, to, to be on a show that I thought could be a good show. On the set, there was a tremendous amount of energy. There, there usually is when you get that many guys together, and they're together all the time, and we're playing a basketball team. And I think that came through on the screen, the fun, the energy, the sort of way the guys had this camaraderie with each other. But it became less challenging for me as an actor. Having been the sort of lead in the pilot, as the show went on, of course, everybody got a chance to have his episode. And that was as it should have been, given there were so many guys and so many stories to go around. But I just started looking around at other things. I started looking at the process of filmmaking. What do you mean by that? There was a seminal moment where we were all horsing around on the stage, and they were trying to light the set between takes between setups. They had built this basketball goal outside stage 17. And between setups, they asked us to go out there and play because we would keep up so much noise that the crew couldn't hear the light. People just horsing around, having a good time. I mean, these, these guys were just full of energy. And I thought, my god, they're sending us out to play like children. And I didn't think of myself as, as a child, you know, but it felt like that. But of course, they were just doing what they needed to do to get the thing lit and ready to shoot. And so I thought, you know, I'm not going out there. I want to see what's happening in here. I want to see how are they lighting the set. I want to see what choices the director's making. I want to see what the sound guy is doing. I want to see what that process is. Instead of hanging out here all day, you could be working. And so I was interested in how, how shows are made. That really led to me becoming a director because I then just on my own began a, an effort to sort of learn how to direct a show. And so I would come in on my days off. I'd go to locations when I didn't have to work. People would look at me and go, well, why are you here? You, you don't have to work today. And I'd say, well, I just want to observe. I just want to watch. Bruce Paltrow noticed that I was doing that. And he said that I would have to do more. I'd have to go to the editing room to watch how the film was put together. But I used to go to dailies every day. You'd go into a screening room, and they would show the prior day's work. It was a great opportunity again to learn. I was in a unique position. Thomas was very enthusiastic and very dynamic. And once he understood that Bruce was serious about giving him an opportunity to direct, he came into the office to just hang out in writer's sessions. And he hung out with Bruce as much as he could to just kind of soak it up. Thomas was everywhere. He was in editing, he was in the production meetings, he was in casting. He really did put in the time to show Bruce that he was serious about it. I'm busting my butt, busting my butt, working days and nights. And then, of course, he got to direct when Bruce felt he was ready. In the second season, he said, you know, so you, you think you're ready? You think you want to do one? I said, yeah. He said, well, do you want to do, like, one of the first six or, you know, something after that? I said, no, I want to do one of the first six. Let's, let's go and let's do it. Let's give our boy Thomas a shot. Yeah. When I got a chance to direct my first episode, all the guys were so supportive of me. They were all, you know, just really there for me. I think they had a certain respect for me as an actor, but they just worked, you know, so willingly and so well 
with me, and I was so grateful for that. I just thought they were absolutely terrific. You know, when we worked with Thomas Carter on that first episode as a director, which was entitled Me, was one of my favorites. It was evident right away that he was an extremely talented, very serious filmmaker. I mean, his whole attitude reflected that from day one. And that was not an easy thing, to take a group of young guys in a situation like that and get them all to focus on the job at hand. I mean, you know, we got comfortable, there's no doubt about it. It's not that we were not directable, but I'm sure that Thomas felt a tremendous amount of pressure because he was one of us to earn our respect. You're probably starting to feel the pressure a little bit by now. It's normal to have butterflies before a big game like this. You know, we knew just by watching him work with the crew, seeing his sort of command of what he wanted to do and how he wanted to do it, and, and his, the specific nature in which he was able to articulate that, we knew that we were dealing with a guy who was going to make us all better. And uh, I continue to learn from him to this day. So. You know, I commend him. It was, it was quite an experience. Nobody believed that I would get to direct, really. None of the other guys sort of really thought it would happen, and, and some even thought, I'm sure, that I was standoffish at that point. Yeah, hold, hold it just a second. I mean, we're supposed to be a team, ain't we? And I wasn't at all. I, I really adore those guys and, and loved being part of that group on the show, but also I had, you know, a separate interest, which was to direct. The other actors went, wow that it really happened. Nobody thought it actually would, especially the fact that they'd never directed it before, especially the fact that they were a minority, which is not such a big deal now, but really was then. And so, for example, Kevin Hooks, like, kind of missed out on the opportunity, and I think he kicked himself <laughs> the whole time that if he just would have got on the bandwagon sooner, he could have directed The White Shadow. Now, I wonder what she meant by that. I actually had an opportunity to direct the Ella Fitzgerald episode. It was the last episode that we did. Cheers. Life. And unbeknownst to me, I didn't know that that was going to be what the content of the episode was. But in the third season, I had been hanging out and studying with other directors of Thomas, Victor Lobel, and all the people that did the show. And they came to me and they said, we feel like you're ready now to direct an episode. And I said, oh, great, because I had spent a year and a half of just sort of hanging out and not having days off and all that. And they said, well, there's two episodes available. There's episode 15 and episode 18. I said, well, look, you know, Thomas Carter has been such a integral part of, you know, my education. I said, is he going to direct another episode? And they said, yeah, he's going to direct episode 17. I said, OK, perfect. Why don't I direct episode 18? I'll watch Thomas during 17 as I'm prepping, and then I'll go do 18. And hopefully, he'll be around while he's editing. He can sort of help me out a little bit. Great. So they booked me for episode 18. And I'll never forget Bruce called me a few weeks later. He says, well, I got bad news. The networks asked us to stop after 15. When I found out that it was Ella Fitzgerald and it was Nathan Cook, who's one of my favorite people on the planet, I was really disappointed that I didn't get an opportunity to do it, aside from the letdown of, you know, here's my dream, and, and it was Bruce, and, and they weren't going to get a chance to fulfill it. But they did. They got the opportunity when they produced St. Elsewhere. Timmy Van Patten, Thomas Carter, and, and Kevin Hooks were three distinct personalities. Tim was just a guy who was enjoying himself and felt he had completely stepped in shit. And it was just like the greatest, I'm out here, I'm playing basketball, I have a car, they're paying me, I don't work every day. Girls, both Timmy and Kevin, started to see that Thomas was onto something and that they weren't going to be able to play kids forever. One of these days, you're going to have to start thinking seriously about something. Thomas came to that show extremely focused and really driven. And I always admired that about him. I mean, gosh, I mean, he saw right away what he wanted to do. I was still sort of grappling with just acting. OK, let's go. Hustle, hustle. Come on. And uh, I never thought that I would be doing what I'm doing today as a director. It was because of Thomas and Kevin, Eric Lonneville, who wasn't a regular, but he was a semi-regular, started to direct Unseen Elsewhere. It was because of those guys that it opened the door for me. And, you know, Bruce was great about that. You know, he started so many people in the business, both as writers, directors, actors. You got our connections. It was an exciting experience for me to do the first episode called Me, which was a very socially relevant episode about one of the kids getting a venereal disease, complicated by the fact that he got it from a, a teammate's ex-girlfriend. And so 
it, it was really, for me, as an actor's director, something I really loved doing. And I liked the visual aspect of making a film. I had never done that, but I had loved movies. And so I there were things I saw in movies that I liked that I wanted to bring to this, some of which I was able to do, some I couldn't, but I was learning and I, I had ideas. But I have to say on my first episode, uh, after I finished it, was glad I finished it and didn't necessarily at that point want to do it again because it was a lot more responsibility than I, than I knew it was. It was a lot more pressure than being an actor. In television, of course, you've got to do everything a certain amount of time and you've got to really know what you're doing and you've got to be able to improvise when time's running out. And, and so it was just a lot of pressure and I thought, man, it was just much easier being, being an actor. I liked it, but I didn't like that part of it. And I kind of proven to myself and to everybody, so, oh, oh, I can do this. But they liked the show, and then they offered me another one. Bruce offered me another show. You don't know why, because I don't even know why, man. I wasn't looking to do one, but this one was called Salami's Affair. I got to work with Tim Van Patten, who I thought was sort of one of the better actors on the show without anybody knowing it. Timmy was this guy who, he'd go off in the summer and clean barnacles off boats in the Caribbean, and he was a bricklayer. I mean, he, was a, he came from an acting family, but it wasn't something he had a lot of experience doing, but he brought a, a real natural feel to, to his work, and I, I, thought, I thought he was very gifted. And so I got to do this episode, which I actually really liked doing. You know, it was the second time out, I knew a little bit more than I did the first time. It was actually only on that episode, I remember I was in post-production, around Christmas and the studio was kind of shut down but I was in the editing room alone with the editor working on the film and I I began to really understand how much control I had how much difference I could make in the editing room and, and, and how I could play with the rhythms and pace and the mood of the piece and, and I was loving it you know it was like in a, in a workshop and began to understand how all these elements of filmmaking come together to to make a film. And I thought, you know, this is something, at that point I thought, well, this is something I could do and enjoy doing. And I had a lot more to learn, but it was really that time where I just, just had this real spark of, of excitement about filmmaking. And it's followed me, that experience, from then to, till this day. I think for me, the White Shadow will always be special, personally, because it's where I got an opportunity to direct. And Bruce Paltrow said to me, he said, look, I'm gonna give you this opportunity, and it's gonna change your life. Uh, and he felt it was gonna change my life because I'd always be able to make a living. Because unlike acting, where I'd always have to go and audition and be about the way I looked or how tall or short I was, this would be about the work. And if I could do the work and do it well, I'd always have a job, I'd always be able to, to, to be employed. And that was another level of the business. And he was right. But more importantly for me, just creatively, I, I gained access to a creative outlet that I only had begun to imagine what I could do as a director and what I discovered in terms of the kind of control that I would have and involvement that I would have with all aspects of production. Creatively, it's, I found, you know, my home.